Hi guys, this is Abby from Witchcraft and Criminal History. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're doing well. We're doing another Zero Killer video. Yay! Alright, we're doing one on one from America. This one is from, you know, early on in America. So Yay! I know I did one couple in Britain, one in Hungary and Transylvania, and now we're going to the US. Alright. Who are we doing today? Today we're doing Jolly Jane. You guys might be wondering, who the hell is Jolly Jane? Jolly Jane is Jane is also known as Jane Topham. Her original name was Honora Kelly. She was born on the 17th of August 1854. In Jane Topham's family, there was a lot of insanity. Her father went insane and got sent to a, an insane asylum, and same with her sister. And she was sent to, you know, sent to a family for them to look after her and raise her. And this family was known as the Topan family. And the Topan family, you know, pretty much treated her like, you know, like a servant. They didn't give her any love. They didn't give her any attention. And yet they had a daughter around Jane's age, but they um, totally ignored her. And this was back in those days. It'd be pretty much like today, be very similar to foster care. So, like she was awarded to the state, and she was only a young child at the time. So. You know, so this was a bit of a big upheaval when she was a child. First seeing her father and her sister going completely insane. And then sent to a family who was supposed to look after her and raise her as their own. And being treated like a servant. So you can see where she was going on. She was getting very, very jealous of her sister. Oh, the, the, the Topan's daughter. Because she was seeing things that, you know, she really wanted. And when the Topan's daughter got engaged to a, a clergyman, she got even more, more jealous towards, you could say, her adopted sister. Because everything was denied to Jane, and yet nothing was denied to her stepsister. So you could see the animosity, you know, occurring. Jane Topan decided to change her name from Honora Kelly to Jane Topan to hide her Irish background because her family migrated from Ireland. And her family, you know, migrated, you know, over to Ireland, from Ireland to America. Jane Topan, for during those day and age, she was even though she was treated like a servant, she obviously had education because she later on became a nurse, and she became a private nurse for quite some time. While she was working in the hospitals as a nurse. Patients were turning up dead. 
and she you know lost jobs quite a few times at hospitals when there was too many deaths occurring while she was around she did have a relationship with a guy who jolted her it jolted her means in other words he dumped her he dumped her for another woman and Jane Topan blamed him for all of all of her crimes and she went from you know went from hospital to hospital you know working as a nurse and a lot of the patients they liked her she presented to be very very friendly very outgoing and so she got the nickname Jolly Jane but when she was you know in the, you know studying nursing at the beginning she didn't make much friends she was known pretty much people called her a liar because she would even say to people that she got a job with um, Tsar Russia, which was a lie. And when they had her to attend the mortuary, she enjoyed it a bit too much. And enjoying it too much is not good. And she loved drugs, so she loved dealing with morphine. And I can't think of the other drug, but... There was a couple of drugs she was obsessed with. When she, you know, left that and went into her private practice in the 1890s, the 1880s to 1890s, she, you know, went from family to, you know, from family to family. And, of course, you know, she had been the psychopath she was you know people were ending up dead they all would have a glass of water or homeopathic water or well water just like this and soon afterwards they will end up dead And she went from, you know, family to family. Eventually, she was able to get the person who she really, really wanted. And that was her sister, her stepsister. Her stepsister also became a victim of Jane Topam. And she was the only one who was targeted by Jane. The rest of them was just for the... For the frills of it. Yeah, she she killed her sister by strychnine poisoning. And she later was... And she was caught when she found... When she... When their Davis family all died off. And they didn't die, like, over a period of time. They died very, very close together. Like, within a couple of months. The whole entire family wiped out. And the Davis family, they were good to Jane Topam. You know, they treated her like a friend. And yet, and yet she killed them. All right, and her victims were, Jane Topan had many victims. She could only count up to 30. She said the rest of them happened in hospitals and she lost count. And they suspected it would have been the hundreds. But the ones who was known of killing was Israel Dunham. He was a patient of hers on, and he died on the 26th of May 1895. He was 83 years of age. And one... Common denominator with Jane Topan, she believed that the elderly should die. That what she believed. She believed that the elderly were worthless and they should die. 
Um, lovely Doham patient died on the September 19th, 1897. She died at aged 87. Elizabeth Brigham. Elizabeth Brigham was her stepsister or a foster sister. So this is the one she really wanted to kill. And she died on the August 29, 1899. And she was actually 70. I didn't really thought she was that old, but apparently she was. <laughs> Uh, Mary McNee, McNear, um, she died on December 28, 1899. She was 70. Florence Culkin, she was a housekeeper for um, Elizabeth, so this was in the same family. Died January 15th, 1900, age 45. William Ingram, another patient, died on the 27th of January, 1900. He was 70. Sarah, or she was also known as Myra Connor. She was a patient and she was also a friend to Jane Topan. And she died on the February 11th, 1900. She was 48 years of age. Matty Davis, wife of Alden, so Alden Davis, and she died on the 4th of July, 1901, she was 62, then you got Genevieve Gordon, she was also nicknamed Annie, and she was the daughter of Alden and Matty, and she died on the 31st of July, 1901, then you got Alan da Alden Davis, and he died on August 8, 1901. He was 64. Then you got Mary Gibbs. She was also known as Minnie Gibbs. She was another daughter of Alda Matty. She died on August 13th, 1901. She was 40. And Edna Bannister, sister-in-law of Elizabeth. She died on August 26th. 1901 and she was 77 okay but to tell you the truth i was a little bit surprised about the age of elizabeth brigham because she was foster she was supposed to be around the same age as jane topan and i think jane topan she died in her late 80s and she was in prison she was in a mental asylum for 30 years so I'm taking these ages like a pinch of salt. This is just what I'm reading. Alright. One thing about Jane Topam is that she is a sexual sadist. A sexual sadist is someone who gets sexual pleasure of forgetting... She gets... <laughs> Sorry. A sexual sadist is someone who gets sexual pleasure from another person's pain and suffering. While they're suffering, they're getting, they're, they're enjoying it, they're getting sexual pleasure. Sexual sadists are very, very rare for women. They're more common in men. And like with me personally, I only know... Two other sexual sadists, which were women. Only two, apart from Jane Topan. And they were Elizabeth Baffery and Rosemary West. They're the only ones what I know who were sexual sadists. So, she was, like I said, she got her jollies out of that. A little, you know, a little bit too much. And a lot of her patients who survived her in the hospital, had dreams of being molested by someone and they later discovered that it was Jane Topan. But just imagine how awful it would have been that you're sick in a hospital or what worse, 
you hire a nurse to help you, you know, with everyday ailments. Everyday ailments. You can see that Jane Topan, and she seemed to be a very nice lady, very friendly lady. And also she wasn't that bad looking either. She seemed very friendly, very jovial. And, you know, you trust her. You know, you trust her. You know, like I said... Like I said, you know, they, tr you know, you trusted her, you allowed them, she to live in her, your home, and back in those days, if, you know, there were things like consumption, which was tuberculosis, you had smallpox, you had measles, you had cholera, typhoid, you had all these diseases going around, so if you were wealthy, it was a good idea to get a nurse. And, you know, you will get private nurses, which was quite common back in the day. And like what I said, just imagine how, you know, how it would feel that you trusted this woman. You employed this woman. You employed her. She at first starts, you know, being very nice. She gives you water. And she said it has medicinal uses. Little do you know that the water contains either strychnine or morphine and you die soon afterwards. The thing is with while you're dying, she was seen quite a few times injecting people with morphine. Morphine pretty much helps paralyze you you know it's a painkiller but it also can work if you have an overdose can paralyze your breathing and she would do that and just imagine that someone you trusted gave you an injection she said that gave you an injection gave you something to drink and then you're finding out that it is you're getting hard enough to breathe you can't move and then this person who you loved, who you care for, who you believe is there to look after you and to help you get better, climbs into bed with you and while you are gasping for air because you can't get air because the drugs are um, paralyzing your your muscles around your chest so you can't breathe. So you, you're pretty much suffocating to death. While this lady, while Jane is in bed with you, molesting you, you know, and pretty much in some ways sexually assaulting you, and you're dying. How terrifying would that be? It would be terrifying. And personally, I would never want to have Jane Topan <laughs> to be my nurse. No way. Nuh uh. <laughs> and she was a bit of nurse around the same time as H.H. H. Holmes. I think if these two actually met, um, even though he liked blondes, I think they could be a match made in hell. Him being the mad doctor and she being the mad nurse. And she was, you know, she was convicted after the Davises. She was caught and apprehended. This all happened in Massachusetts, by the way. You know, she went to trial. And she w was... They deemed um, Jane Topan to be an insane... And she was sent to an insane asylum. Back in those days, they didn't believe that women could be murderers. And if you did constant murder, like a serial murder with women, 
More often than not, you wouldn't go to old Sparky or the noose or the gas chamber. I wasn't quite sure if the gas chamber was around then. You wouldn't be sent there. You would be sent to an insane asylum. Because they would think that you are insane. Heck, I haven't heard of a case where a woman um, was pretty much raped by a man and she shot and killed him, but because she was sexually assaulted, this was about the same time frame, she actually shot him, killed him, and she actually walked out of, the, out of prison, she actually walked out of court a free woman because it was temporary insanity. She didn't even spend one day either in jail or in an insane asylum. But that's another case. But this is the same period. So what I was getting at pretty much. If you're a serial murderer and you are a woman. And you get caught. And especially in the US in, in particular. I think also sometimes in the UK as well. More often than not you would be sent to the insane asylum. Because they believe that women are. You know are gentle. They're gentle of the sex, they're obedient, they're loving, they're caring. <sighs> and that's what they believed. They didn't believe that women were capable of doing that. They weren't, they believed that they couldn't be capable of it. It's not in their nature and if they do do it, then obviously they're insane. She spent about 30, 30 years in the insane asylum and she died in, 19, in October 29, 1938. She was 84. Her famous line, line she would always tell the nurses while she was in the insane asylum was, was pretty much, let's go and get the drugs and go around and give it. And let's watch the people die. But she was not quoted of saying. To have killed more people. Helpless people. Than any other man or woman who had ever lived. That what she said. She was proud of what she did. She was proud and she loved it. She loved every single one of her murders. And as I said, she could only recall 30 murders. She could not recall anything beyond the number 30. But as they suspected, she killed well and truly in the hundreds. So she killed, you know, she killed a lot of it, you know, a lot of people. And, you know, it is a fascinating case. And to tell you the truth, today when I was choosing a topic to do for you guys, I was actually to tossing up between Jolly Jane and H.H. H. Holmes. But I thought, let's go with Jolly Jane. Primarily, there's not much, you know, not much videos on Jane Topam. And quite a few times I've seen a lot of videos and on Jane Topan and they put the wrong photo down and I actually had to correct them right that's not a that's another serial killer because there was another serial killer and I actually seen an older photo from another from this guy was a professor of law and he was doing talk about it very fascinating video and the older photos of Jane Topan yes she looked Slightly similar to this other lady, but they still were two different, two different women. And that one was Belle Guinness. She also was around that particular time, and she was also a poisoner. But, but that's with Belle Guinness, and I, I probably will do Belle Guinness, you know, on another um, video. So this is a video on Jane Topam. And I think she, Jane Topan died of natural causes in a tan asylum. Well, anyway, 
Hopefully you've enjoyed this video on Jane Topam. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and blessed be.